Hey guys, gonna go through some combos with the Egyptian God custom support that was showcased yesterday. So this is gonna go through Slifer, Obelisk, and then Harakti. If you wanna check out some test hands for the Winged Dragon of Rock custom support that was done earlier, you can check it out with the link in the description or this card in the corner. But starting off with Slifer, we have a nifty two card combo. This is probably the best of an opening you can get with not only this deck, but with many decks really. You start off with either Joker's Knight or the Tricky and the Trick deck. And so Joker's Knight and Tricky both have special summoning abilities. They can put themselves on the field. Joker's Knight is a bit cleaner since it doesn't require any sort of discard or a minus one to get it on the board. You simply send one of the face knights from the deck to the grave. We'll send Queen's Knight. And it takes on the name Queen's Knight while it's on the field until the end phase. But that's really important here because the Trick deck activates if you control a monster whose original name is the Tricky or Joker's Knight. So in this case, we have an original Joker's Knight. And then we special summon from our deck one, the Tricky or Joker's Knight with a different name from monsters you control. So even if you weren't running the Tricky in your deck, you could still summon Joker's Knight from your deck because Joker's Knight is different from what this card's current name is, which is Queen's Knight. So it fulfills the activation requirement by having the original name, but when you're resolving it, it has a different name from the monster that you're going to summon, whether that be the Tricky or Joker's Knight. I'll bring out the Tricky anyways, but just pointing out that little nuance there to showcase the uh, the extreme thought that I have put into these cards. Anyway, so the rest of the trick deck resolves. Then we take one Divine Beast monster from the deck and place it on top of the deck or send it to the grave. We are going to send Slifer to the graveyard. All right, and so now we've got two level fives on the board, which allows us to go into the custom Xyz Aces Knight. Aces Knight on Xyz Summon allows us to grab a spell trap that mentions Slifer the Sky Dragon from the deck. So we will grab the Revive Sky God. This is the card that Konami created, so don't get mad at me for this plus six that we're about to get. Set the card and pass to our opponent in their standby phase after they've drawn the six cards in hand. We activate the Revive Sky God, which allows us to special summon Slifer from the grave, and then both players draw until they have six cards in hand. So unless they have some sort of quick play or something that they can activate right off the bat, they're not going to draw anything. They have six cards in hand. We're going to get a full plus six. And I drew exactly what I was hoping to draw, which is another one of the custom cards. The rest of the sand is kind of icky. Uh, but we got Thunder of Heaven, which is a great card to have in hand, particularly when you summon it, when you get it the way that we just summoned Slifer. Because Slifer is only going to last on the field for this turn because of its effect when it's special summoned, it's sent to the grave at the end of the turn. But we have Thunder of Heaven in hand. So Thunder of Heaven can be activated from hand if you control Slifer the Sky Dragon, which means that we can activate it preemptively. So if our opponent were to normal summon or inherently special summon something, it's going to be affected by this. Or we can wait for our opponent to activate an effect that would allow them to special summon. And this is going to either way force them to summon things in attack position, which is really important because Slifer's second mouth effect only works if our opponent summons things in attack position. And so most of the time, combo pieces, especially early combo pieces, are going to have 2000 attack or less. So they might be able to get their effects off, but Slifer the Sky Dragon will at least blow them up so they can't go into any sort of extra deck plays. And so that's the nifty aspect of Thunder of Heaven, and particularly when you're able to get that plus six with Revive Sky God, it's very likely, depending on how many copies you draw, that you're going to draw it. And so like I said, in the end phase, since Slifer was special summoned from the grave, it's going to go to the graveyard. But if we had, say it's like later in the duel, or you just had a really robust turn one, and you have Ace's hole, Ace in the hole in the graveyard, Ace in the hole has a graveyard effect where a Slifer the Sky Dragon you control will be removed from the field by a card effect, including itself. You can banish this card from the grave instead. So this combos very well with any of the cards that special summon Slifer, whether that be the Revive Sky God or Ace in the Hole itself, allowing you to keep Slifer on board. The final thing that I forgot to mention is that if our opponent did summon something and they were forced to summon in an attack position thanks to Thunder of Heaven, when Slifer the Sky Dragon blows it up, Thunder of Heaven has a graveyard effect that can activate, where when Slifer the Sky Dragon destroys an opponent's monster by its effect, we can banish it to draw a card. So replenishing that one card that we gave up to activate Thunder of Heaven to bring Slifer back up to 6k attack defense. So that is it for Slifer, let's move on to Obelisk. All right, so here's Obelisk, and Obelisk is going to be a bit different from Slifer because where Slifer has those go-to two-card, three-card combos that are gonna generate a lot of pluses for you like was just demonstrated, Obelisk instead has a bunch of different interactions within the deck. So there's not a, a go-to move, so to speak, but one card can work with four other cards and another card can work with three other cards and so there's a lot of different interactions it just really depends on what you draw and what is the best way to play it out so going with this randomized hand we can start off with union hanger activate that to search out a light machine union monster from deck to hand 
will grab Union Leader. And so the other aspect of this deck is that it is going to combine the card showcase in the Egyptian God card showcase yesterday, as well as the ones from the XYZ Dragon Cannon showcase from a few months back. You can check it out with the card in the corner or link in the description. And Union Leader is one of those cards from earlier. But well, we're going to activate Normal Summon XYZ Mechanic, activate its effect on Summon, allows us to add a spell or trap from deck to hand that mentions X Head Cannon, Y Dragon Head, and Z Metal Tank. And then also trigger Union Hanger, where when we summon a Light Machine Union Monster, we can target it and equip an appropriate Light Machine Union Monster with a different name from deck to that monster. So let's grab. We'll go ahead and equip XYZ Mechanic with Union Leader. And then with XYZ Mechanic, there's really only two cards you can search out for. I believe there's XYZ Combine, and then there's Divine Union, which is the custom card. We'll grab Divine Union. Activate Divine Union, and then Union Leader, we have the one in hand, which can be equipped from the field or hand. So a lot of much needed speed for Unions, since they typically require you having two monsters on board to be able to use their effects to equip them. This guy can equip from hand, and when it is equipped as a Union Monster, we can add a Union Spell or Trap from deck to hand. It's also going to trigger Divine Union because when a Union monster is equipped to a monster we control, like we just did with Union Leader equipping to XYZ Mechanic, we can add an Obelisk Torment or a Spell Trap that mentions it from deck to hand. So we're going to get two searches here. So again, like I was saying, a lot of easy plus ones that this deck can get into. With Divine Union, we grab, we already have Obelisk Tormentor in hand, so we can grab really anything. Let's just go ahead and grab just the Fate. And then with Union Leader, we grab a Union Spell Trap. Let's grab Union Strike. So this deck can kind of sort of clog up your back row, but let's go ahead and set Soul Crossing and Union Strike. Pass to our opponent. On our opponent's turn, we have a lot of disruption going for us. First off is the custom card that is Union Strike. Allows us to special summon as many Union monsters in our Spell Trap zone as possible to negate that many effects on the board. So if our opponent has two different things on the board that we want to negate, Union Strike will be able to do so since we special summon two Union Leaders that were in the Spell Trap Zone. The next thing we have, of course, is that Ash Blossom. And then finally, if our opponent is able to get through both of those things, we have Soul Crossing, allowing us to tribute three monsters from anywhere on the board to bring out Obelisk to Tormentor from our hand. And then going into our next turn, we can start going into some more pluses, whether that be with that Fist of Fate being able to get rid of any sort of threat that our opponent has or equipping more Unions to search out more Obelisk cards as well. But that is Obelisk for you. Now let's finally get into Horakti. All right, so skipping over to Horakti because, like I mentioned in the yesterday showcase, the Winged Dragon Bra was done on its own a few months back, and so you can check out those test hands with this card in the corner, link in the description. So now let's demonstrate what the Horakti deck looks like. Again, this is combining all three of the Egyptian God cards. And then, as I mentioned yesterday, you probably want to go with just one of the engines. So whether that be the Slime Engine, the Face Knight Engine, or the XYZ Dragon Cannon Engine. My preference is the Slime Engine, which I'll demonstrate why that is in just here in a second, but just kind of depends on what your preferences is. But Effect Slime is a great opener for the deck because on some you can add a Slime card from deck to hand. Effect Slime being one of those custom cards that was showcased with the raw support. We search out another one of those custom cards being Slime Everywhere. Activate Slime Everywhere to destroy a Slime Monster with Control to Special Summon two Slime Monsters from our deck with different names. Grab Guardian Slime, and Battle Slime, Effect Slime when it is destroyed by a card effect Special Summons itself from the graveyard. Bring him back out. Now we got three monsters on the board. Bring out Egyptian God Slime by sending, by tributing a level 10 Aqua Monster with zero attack. Guardian Slime when it is sent to the grave allows us to search out a... Spell Trap that mentions the Winged Dragon of Ra. Let's grab the True Sun God. Here we activate Gods of Divine Light, banishing a Harakti, the Creator of Light. English name, Halakti, the Creator of Light. So let's banish that from our deck. The rest of its effects are going to activate from the graveyard here in a second. We'll activate the True Sun God. Allows us to search out a card that mentions the Winged Dragon of Ra, except itself, or, or the Winged Dragon of Ra. We'll grab Ancient Chant. Activate Ancient Chant to search out Winged Dragon of Ra from our deck or grave. Alright, and so now Egyptian God Slime can take on three tributes for the tribute summon of a monster. So we'll just first banish Ancient Chant so we get the combination of the stats tributed. Tribute the wing tribute summon the Winged Dragon Rob by tributing Egyptian God Slime. So thanks to Ancient Chant, it'll take on the combined stats of the monsters tributed for it. So that being just Egyptian God Slime will come out at 3k, 3k. 
doesn't really matter here, but just make sure all the bases are covered. And now since we tribute summoned Slifer, Obelisk, or Raw, in this case Raw, we can banish this card from the grave, add a banished monster from our banishment. So we'll grab back the Harakti. Then we can send a Divine Beast monster from deck to grave. So we will send the one that we don't see here. That'll be Slifer. Activate Millennium Revelation. You can send a Divine Beast monster from hand to the grave to add a monster reborn from the deck or graveyard. We'll send Obelisk to grab a monster reborn. Activate Breaking Ruin God. Can't be negated. Special Summon Obelisk from Hand or Graveyard. We'll grab the one that's in the grave. It'll be sent to the grave in the end phase, but we won't let it get there. Activate the Monster Reborn we searched out to bring out the final Egyptian God, Slifer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we can go for the FDK and bring out Halakti, Arakti, whatever you want to call it. Summoned by tributing the three Egyptian gods, and we win the duel right here on the spot. This, of course, was the ideal hand. You're not always going to open it that way. You're probably though going to easily be able to bring out any one of the Egyptian gods, maybe even two on any given turn. But just to demonstrate what the full potential, full scope of this deck is, it is incredibly possible to bring out Harakti right here on the first turn of the duel and go for game. So that does it for the test hands for Slifer, Obelisk, Harakti, and of course Raw done earlier. You can check out the full Egyptian God Showcase with this card in the corner as well as with the link in the description alongside the Raw Showcase. All these cards are available for public use on Dueling Book and make sure to like and subscribe and share as we gear up for the Wicked Gods coming next week.